happy Friday night. <laughs> happy Friday night, everybody. Come on, go for it. Go for it. Get in there, Ted. Get in there. Cheers, my dears. Happy Friday. Welcome happy to a spooky and crazy. Get in there, Ted. And shout out to Claire. Big okay. shout out to Claire. Yeah. Oh, let me have a quick sip. Thank you. Happy Friday night from Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. These are my two offspring. I broke my bones. You broke your bones. Well, it's an appropriate night to break your bones. Okay, should we show player number? Go ahead. Four or three. Giant spider, everybody. This is a giant spider. Um, hold him up a little bit. Buttons is also here dressed as a spider tonight. We are having a super, um, we're having a spooky beginning to the episode, and then we are switching over. So we are having some <laughs> times, just for a minute, right? Just for can a they, minute. Can they see the raven? We're being fairly stupid. Can they see the raven? Oh, no, they can't see No, the no. Our camera's, you know, I was trying to push the camera back a little. Fair we about. were trying to get you well, just me, right. Let me grab the raven. Hey, you want to grab the raven? Things you don't hear every day. Let's see who's here while Teddy grabs the raven. Oh, I Gami's broke, there. I Happy cocktail the night, Gami. Okay, I, I broke the setup. You broke the setup. Fantastic. All right. Happy cut. Just let it go, Ted. My spider is so funny and cute. Happy cocktail night. Okay, Glad to fine. see you. I'm going to eat pizza. You go have your pizza and then come back and join us, okay? My little co-host over here, Kirsten. You're going to leave soon? Oh, stay for a little while, yeah, honey. I was going to start the episode with a nice um, Halloween poem that you might enjoy. Right? Some serious weirdness going on. <laughs> you know, I was just remembering, Mom, it must have been last Halloween. I'm really fooling with things tonight, huh? It must have been last Halloween that we did that episode. I think it was a trivia night, which we haven't returned to, and we ought to return to. Um, there she is. That little pretty face is going to emerge. We did that Halloween episode, and I remember because there was a still of us on camera, you dressed as a wolf with the wolf mask on, and I was dressed like a fortune teller or something. And we sent the said. thumbnail to my sister Jessica, and um, the, the, the tag on it said, is this normal? But I guess this isn't normal either. We are we are at Halloween weekend again. Are you excited, baby? Yeah, and you know someone at my school also had a Medusa hat on. Do they have this Medusa hat no. on? Okay, I was going to say, uh-oh, uh-oh. Like uh -oh. no, this is a great Medusa hat. I got this on Amazon, but we, we found it in Vermont first, and I was too cheap to buy it. And then I longed for it like, like crazy, right? So... Happy Halloween, everybody, if you're celebrating. Kirsten, happy Halloween. Mom, um, happy Friday night. Hopefully we see you tomorrow. Christine, hello. Raining so hard and the little ones are having their Halloween parade tonight. Oh, no. Through the village. Oh, it's nice and cozy to be here. I hope they had the parade anyway. Bad weather on Halloween is just something that happens, isn't it? you got to just go with it. Take a look at this crazy drink with, like, the violet liqueur. And uh, I can't remember what else is in here, but it's gray and grotesque and there looks like there's something stabbed out. oh it's a it's a cherry it's a cherry pretty it's good lime juice, lime juice. Uh, uh black currant brandy black currant brandy gin gin and grape fanta and grape fanta grape soda are you using your grape soda i am sorry hey, hey mom i have yes. a question okay what's your question if the the purple one has eyes like this where you can still see my eyes, yeah. can I put like black or purple paint over it? She's um, asking an unrug related question. We have many of these ghost face masks. Apparently you're supposed to say ghost face and not scream, just I'm, to be correct. I'm pretty sure they're called scream, but everyone's called I think the movie's face. called scream, but I think the mask is called ghost face. And we do have them in purple mm -hmm. and red and several colors and yes i do i did actually buy this netting this week at joann's so that we can put that in all of the eyes just make sure that they don't see my eyes no i know not if seeing your do, eyes it's a dead giveaway because you color. look like an absolute killer until they see your eyes otherwise everything you know looks looks normal all right jennifer good to see you happy friday night Catherine. happy friday night no cocktail yet get going get run in there quick right Jennifer says, I actually just have juice, but it's in a fancy glass. It's, it's a killer. It's like a, it's like a decoy, isn't it? Decoy glass. Tara, cheers, <laughs> my dears. Oh, cheers, my dears. It's a killer, everybody. 
He's a killer dog. He's a spider. Spider ghost. Let's see. Tara's there. Mom is there. Spoiling. Oh, I know. Raining on the Halloween parade. Bummer. I'm just catching up on chats here. Oh, Linda, happy Friday. Good to see you. <laughs> we had to dress up at the last minute. I mean, how could we how could we not, right? Lily, good to see you. I bet you're getting getting a moment that you can tune in for a little while. Thank you, Christine. Hey, Chrissy, cheers, my dears, with your Mai Tai. One of my favorites. Oh, Mai Tais. That makes me want to go to the Chinese restaurant and have a nice dinner. Mm-hmm. They are so into this ghost face thing right now. It's crazy, isn't it? We're fighting over who's going to wear what color go fa ghost face mask. Kenny wants to wear this one, but I want to wear this one, too. Well, that's, I mean, we bought that one for Teddy. So if you don't want to wear the purple one or the red one or any of the other ghost faces we have, then we're going to have to go to the Halloween store and get another white ghost face. I mean, I do want a white ghost face. Especially if you glow in the dark. Courtney, good to see you. Thank you. It's just the one day a year that we can do this, right? Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. You want to switch masks? Mask. Let's see. Courtney's here. Mom is here. Teresa. Happy Friday. Happy cocktail night. April, happy cocktail night. Jill, you have your glass of wine. Very civilized. Happy cocktail night, everybody. She switched identities here. And, you know, I was going to start the night because I, I pulled out. Remember last week we did our bingo night, right? And, um... You read a lovely poem for us. Do you remember? Yeah. I'm going to read it. I'm going to start the night with a nice poem, too. Oh, this actually looks cool with the, with the other face under. I think you'd be a little bit warm. I mean, that's like um, two layers of insanity between your face and the, and the night air. I would just go for, I would make a choice. I'd make a good choice. So let's enjoy. You know, I love getting these old-time books. Then we're going to switch to our subject for tonight, which is this impossibly charming book and I almost didn't run this episode because I know that this book is very rare very scarce scarce as hen's teeth very hard to find and I don't want it to be a heartbreak for everybody that we're looking at this phenomenal impossibly charming book by Nancy Butts Thompson called Hooking on the Hill so I had mixed feelings about it and I've been waiting a long time to cover this book but at the end of the day, spiders knocking things over over here. Come here. At the end of the day, um, because it's so scarce, uh, scarce, I feel like we might as well enjoy it together, right? And if you are one of these lucky people who it pops up on Rug Hooking Buy and Sell or one of these places or pops up on eBay and you're able to get it for not a king's ransom, for not uh, your left arm or a lung, then you you will love having it. But in the meantime, at least we can look at some of the images your in the left, book. Your left arm or your left And enjoy. What's on my glasses? Is there a shadow? There is. Look it. There's something on my... Sh what is that? What is that Halloween schmutz? There's something on my glasses. That soup... Oh, you know what it is? Oh. Uh-oh. She made this for me like one minute before we went live. It's a lovely it. glitter... Uh, yeah, yeah. Gravity's going to get it. It's a lovely glitter-filled um, and and um, glue glue-filled. That's okay. I'll just wipe it on the arm of the chair because it's totally destroyed anyway. I was thinking, wow, what a weird optical illusion. It looks like I stuck my face in a jam jar, but <laughs> a actually, I, <laughs> not that far off. So we were reading last week. Jossie read us a lovely poem. It was Look, five I little ghosts or something. Blanket. Okay, yeah, you did. And, you know, I busted out this one this week because I love, don't you love finding vintage books? I love finding them, particularly on the holidays, on the seasons in general. But does anybody remember this author? This this wasn't in my libraries. I was like 70s, 80s, right? Born in 72. So I wasn't really seeing these nice sort of buckram covered books in my library. But I have since discovered from eBay that this woman, um, Elizabeth, what's her name? Wait a minute. Let's get creepy. Too close, too close. Elizabeth Howe uh, Seacrest wrote a whole series of the most charming books for kids that were at that time in libraries of schools. And I, co I collect all of them. I think I have all of them at this point. And I like them with the buckram cover rather than the dust jacket. I like the little library tag on it. Remember the Dewey Decimal System? Because it makes me think how many kids over the years grabbed for this book because it was about Halloween. How sweet and special, right? Yeah. I just love these. Yes, Joss. Can I turn on that or is that copyright? 
Um, I wouldn't turn, we have a, a wonderful sound effect machine behind us, but it plays the song Soul Man. And I remember from our Christmas Day special when we ran some Christmas songs, the episode got locked and pulled because um, the powers that be identified the, the copyrighted song in the background. So I think perhaps not. But instead, let's listen to this. This is an adorable poem. We'll start the night with an adorable Halloween poem. And i got to wet my whistle one more time, right? Why is there a sword sticking in a cherry? Why, indeed, because it's Halloween. Wait, Why is there a sword sticking in a cherry? Because it's Excalibur, and it's Halloween. That's cool. Isn't it? You want the cherry? No. Mm. So this poem... Can I read it? Mm -hmm. You want to try to read it? Yeah. Which one? Well, this is a very long one. Let me read this. It's not very long, but it's a bit tricky, and it requires some cadence. Not that I don't trust you, but why don't I, when, when I read this poem, I'll start the episode. Can I try? Nope. And then you pick another one from the book to read to them at intermission, and we will all be waiting for that, okay? Do so I have to stay here? No, you can take the book away and choose which of the other poems you're going to read to them, because we're going to read more than one poem tonight, all right? Why can I read? This, you can leave for this moment. This poem is by Alice Crowell Hoffman, and it's called A Recipe for Halloween. And it goes like this. Doreen, great to see you. Oh, Courtney, I'm glad you got your package. Yeah. And Mom says, got to run out and pick up the sushi. I am super jealous now. I'm super jealous, but okay. What can I do? I'll be over there tomorrow. A Recipe for Halloween by Alice Crowell Hoffman. And it goes like this. Take a dozen witches, broomsticks, five or six, several hundred goblins, each one up to tricks. Take some owls a hooting and some scatting cats, jack o' lantern spooky, several hundred bats. Season well with laughter, harmless fun that's fine. Add a dish of shivers creeping down the spine. Stir them all together, looking very sober. In a big black cauldron, last day of October. Isn't that so sweet? Just come and get the book and you can pick a different poem, okay? She really wants to read you a poem. So I'm feeling it. I hope you're feeling it too. I hope I'm always feeling it, even when the kids are not, can't even think about it, around here and uh, celebrating with crazy costumes and masks. I'm still hoping I'm going to be feeling it and enjoying the other kids in the neighborhood coming and going and all that stuff because it is such fun to celebrate anything isn't it so I'm going to shift gears pretty um, severely right now mm. who knew that a gray drink could be so tasty and move to this book that I have been waiting for and holding off on this book is just the epitome of cozy and charming so again hooking on the hill Nancy Butts Thompson. I think I was saying Thomas this week, but Thompson. This book is so sweet, and it is called A Rug Hooking Picture Book, which is exactly what it is, from the Heavenly Hook Nook in Athens, Georgia. And, you know, I was laying in bed last night thinking, I'm feeling a road trip coming on because I say this all the time. But, I mean, I've got to research this place, make sure that these ladies are still here and having fun and doing what they're doing because... This just kills me. And I can't even remember if I've been to Athens, Georgia. I know I've been to, like, uh, of course, Savannah many times, but Fried Green Tomatoes Place. I forget what town that's in. And uh, Macon, Georgia. But I don't know if I've been to Athens, Georgia. And this is going to be a very strong reason to go. You can see right on the cover of the book. Let me come, let me come closer. Right on the cover of the book is that really sweet image. The heavenly hook nook. Isn't that precious? I mean, isn't that just... Mm. So it is indeed a picture book and not a ton of text, but there's some text at the beginning. And I want to share that with you because the text at the beginning really sets this up um, for what it is, which is truly a picture book. And it is about this group that is obviously so close and tight and busy and talented um, that it's just amazing. So, Hooking on the Hill, a rug hooking picture book from the Heavenly Hook Nook in Athens, Georgia. And 
she shows you on these uh, sort of title pages that break up the chapters uh, original drawings by Joyce Connell and she does say in the book if you are lucky enough to find the book and have the book she does say let me use her words instead of mine patterns on chapter title pages are yours for the hooking and I think that is so nice that she's giving so many sweet patterns this is the first one on the title page Catherine are you going to Savannah for Thanksgiving in April you're in Georgia April, do you know about this place, the Hook Nook? It's been a long time since I've been to Georgia. It's been a good, well, it was before Teddy was born. And God, I loved it. I just loved driving around and seeing all that moss on the trees. It was so, oh, it was so, um, it, the whole place was so atmospheric. And the food was so good. I will take anything that's covered with cheese and bacon bits. I'll tell you. Don't You don't even have to twist my arm. But at the beginning of every title page, you've got a beautiful uh, illustration like this. It says, get ready, get set, get hooked. And then an example of it having been hooked. And these, these illustrations, I think, are all by Joyce Connell and yours for the hooking. So it's just a nice extra little gift that they give, you know. So, and here's another one. I want to show you these because they're so nice. Um, this seems like a very devout group because they often go to sort of biblical psalms and um, uh, excerpts uh, for inspiration. And that is part of the book, right? That's a big theme in the book, and it is quite lovely. So this is another one, In the Beginning, designed by Joyce Connell. And you can see another cover page where they're just introducing us to the subject. Yeah, April, if you would, that would be amazing. That would be a very strong reason to come. I think last time I went down by the by the airplane. How old do I sound? Um, driving is possible, but the airplane was pretty fast and it was easy. I, th I can't remember if I did it in conjunction because I used to do tours down there when I was a tour guide, you know. We did Charleston and Savannah together. It's been a long time. So let's see. So many great places to be, but this looks like such a hornet's nest of great hookers and friends. And, you know, she dedicates this book at the beginning to some of her friends and her husband, uh, who seems very understanding and um, there, has a great sense of humor about this huge hobby in their lives. And she starts, okay, great, great minds think alike, right? Not really. I'm giving myself a compliment that is not really due. But she starts her book with a poem, and it is so cute. I forgot about this. Let me show you the page first. The poem is called My Rugs. And you see how in the back... Well, we're going to look at these rugs, so don't worry about trying to pick them out with your eyes right now because they're small. I just want to show you the way that this page looks. That it, it, is, it is just as sweet as it can be. It looks like a, like a little checkered tablecloth. And Nancy wrote this herself. It's called My Rugs. When you look at my rugs, you see color, design. You're aware that each pattern took hours of time. You see little girls dancing and angels and dogs and big hungry rabbits and impish green frogs. You see houses and kittens and baskets of flowers and coy little monkeys who hide in green bowers. When the day has been long and my chores at an end, I can feel tension waning when I reach for my friend. With my frame on my lap and my wool close at hand, I can fashion my very own mystical land. Should there be some new story I wish to convey, my hook makes me master of all I survey. My fancies can wind up the rug's final look. New worlds can spring forth from my magical hook. An eagle can soar high, a castle can too. A cottage can beckon, a chicken be blue. When frustrations arise or this old world annoy, I just snip out my sorrow and hook in my joy. True, it's only a rug, but please look at the hole, for you might catch a glimpse of this rug hooker's soul. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic? I absolutely love that. What a sweet way to start this book. And then it, the, in the book, the next uh, sort of movement goes toward people who had to do with this book um, and about Nancy, uh, Nancy Butts uh, Thompson by Amy Nicholson. And Amy writes, wife of Al, mother of many, stepmother of many more, grandmother and Pied Piper to oodles of rug hookers in the Southeast. Nancy has served for a year as region number five rep, 
Georgia, Florida, um, Alabama, for the Association of Traditional Rock Cooking Artists, ATHA. She enjoys dual membership, and it talks about the different organizations that she belongs to. Let me just remind myself, 2005. This book is from 2005. And here we have a picture of Nancy. And it looks like she's posing just like the woman from... Bring in focus. This is our author tonight. We have got to bring her in focus. Let's see. Oh, boy. No reindeer games. There we go. Isn't she pretty? It looks like she's posing in a similar way to the, where's my finger, diamond dies, right? Looks like the diamond die lady there. Isn't that sweet? So at the beginning, she's introducing dying in diamonds. Um, all the people who worked on this book, quite a lot of people, um, such a beautiful job. And it is a picture book. So there's only text to the beginning, but then there's a few words about the author. And it's so pretty the way that it's written that I want to read it before we start looking at pictures. Jossie, come get the book so you can do a poem, honey. Can you tell her to get her earphones off so she can hear what I'm saying? Jossie, get your headphones off. A few words from the author. This book chronicles an extraordinary rug hooking adventure in Georgia. From the very beginning, something quite remarkable has transpired, leading to a lifetime of friendships and the creation of many hand-hooked rugs. There are those who may have failed to see the hand of my creator as he brought each person into the fold, but trust me, he's the reason each one of us was hooked. There are no accidental meetings, and so it's clear that this story was meant to be. You're invited now to join me as this amazing rug hooking adventure unfolds. It really is amazing. And then she writes about the Crescent Lane Rug Hooking Guild. And this is actually by Amy Nicholson. Officially named the Crescent Lane Rug Hookers, but nicknamed the Heavenly Hookers, our group shares fun and fellowship weekly, both in our rug hooking sessions and around the happy, noisy, crowded table. Doesn't that sound like fun? We feel a kinship with the women of early America who followed many creative pursuits out of necessity. These industrious women sought to beautify hearth and home by hooking rugs from any fabric at hand, preferably wool. At, okay, so Joss, do you want to plug in the cord that you just tripped over? Yes. Uh, an old fat, uh, preferably wool. At old-fashioned quilting bees and rug hooking gatherings, strong friendships were formed, lasting bonds such as we are forging through our common interest. And you know, that is so beautifully put. Whoa, x-ray, x-ray. No, that's got to be good enough, right? Um, it's so true. And even th over a distance, as we are every time we get together for coffee time, cocktail time, we are also forming lasting bonds and friendships through our common interest. And isn't that such a nice thing? Because I think about this often, about friendship and how some of my, well, I mean, I don't have a ton of friends, but the ones that I have tend to be ones that I had since kindergarten. And, you know, you meet people over the years, but those are the ones that, you know, no matter what, no matter how crazy they are, how much they upset me, I won't ever cut those ties because it's been 40-something years, right? Did you call me? Yeah, I said, why don't you take that book of poetry? and choose a poem so you can come and uh, read the next poem. I'm sure everybody would enjoy that. Okay, well, I had it open to the poem page before you tripped over the table, pulled out the wire, and shut the lamp off. Let's see. Who cares, right? Who cares? Um, so look at these. This is where the poems start. See if you want to read, like, for example, Little Jack Pumpkin Face or one of these little ones. I like Little Jack Pumpkin. Okay, so read it to yourself first, right, to yourself, and don't trip on the cord again. But there is something very special about, uh, totally empty here, there is something very special about sharing a hobby with someone else because it, it, it is truly a great starting point, isn't it? When you share that thing in common, that always, you know, it's almost like, it doesn't matter if all the other things match perfectly. When you share something that's so important and central, um, that's often enough to get a friendship going, isn't it? I just love that idea of being around the table with these ladies. So we gather at Nancy's home on Crescent Lane, hence the name, every Monday. Residents of the neighborhood refer to it as The Hill. P 
People trickle in and out all afternoon and into the evening. Potluck dinner is always served at six promptly. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that makes me really, really want to go to this place. So it says the Heavenly Hook Nook is our gills home away from home. I lost the page. Almost every Monday, ask Papa for the page. I'm running a live show. Its log walls are bursting at the seams with rug hookers, frames, wool-filled carryalls, and rug patterns of every description. The first thing a visitor notices is the smiles on every face, the uproarious outbursts of laughter, and the genuine camaraderie. And it says, oh, interesting, transported, I'm going to show you the little house, transported to Georgia from Tennessee in 1997, the cabin, circa 1800, is attached to the home of Nancy and Al Thompson in Athens, Georgia. It is here that the Crescent Lane rug hookers, nicknamed the Heavenly Hookers, enjoy weekly hookins. And it is from its rough-hewn walls that many unique rugs have found a home in this book. As you turn the colorful pages, you will join our group in wondering if perhaps we've been looking, we've been hooking rugs in a magical nook. Oh gosh, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Little Jack Pumpkin Face, can you keep this page open? I'm gonna dog ear it, okay? Off she goes. So let's look at these magical rugs, and they really are. Let's look at the house first. So this house is a transplant. It reminds me of. Um, Edith O'Neill's um, home that I was later told there was a terrible fire and was lost. Um, but that house was transplanted from somewhere, I think, in northern New England to, I think it was Texas, right? Um, but this home was tra transplanted from Tennessee to um, um, Athens, Georgia, 1997. Beautiful little log cabin, isn't it? Let there be light, Catherine, right? Oh, Joy, good to see you. <laughs> shenanigans huh oh so good so now it's time to look at the rugs and there are so many rugs and we'll all get an impression as we go along but it, it looks like they are often I'm um, hooking the same rug together which is so much fun hooking the same pattern I mean not like a bee hooking the exact same rug although it looks like this rug was hooked by the group it's called Beacon Hill designed by Lip Calloway and it said, in the summer of 2004, our beloved guild president, Lind uh, Mos Mosman, or Moseman, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Fortunately, she's recovering successfully, but of course the battle isn't easy. We all know that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. So in order to sweeten Lind's recovery, thank you somewhat, our gil guild hooked a rug in her honor. And this is it. I think this is so charming. Beacon Hill. Beautiful rug. Of course, Beacon Hill is one of the prettiest areas of Boston. It's where Cheers Pup is, right on that square at Beacon Hill. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is a group effort, and for a very good cause, too, right? I mean, what a gift. And then there's the group giving a check that they raised um, to give money to, I think, to the hospital for the wing that handles breast cancer, and uh, very, very specifically in, in the name of their friend. So, so such a good start. And then there's a nice um, introduction to the history of rug hooking by Eric Sandberg, who's a past historian of the National Guild of Pro McGowan Hook Crafters. Interesting, right? So this is a nice history. If you have this book or if you're looking at buying this book, it's just the two pages, but it talks about uh, the Grenfell rugs and just the, the very basic, like the skeleton. Skeleton. Um, of rug hooking that we cover often, but just in a nutshell. And then there are great pages like this that just just get me. It says rug contributors, and it shows this group of these hookers who are, um, says, eat your heart out, Linda Carter, dressed as, that's real appropriate for Halloween, dressed as, all dressed as Wonder Woman at a, some kind of a meeting or a workshop. So these are the people who have contributed to the book. I just hooked with some ladies from that guild. Did you, April? Oh, fantastic. Oh, Gail, good morning. Carol, good to see you. You love the antennae. <laughs> I had to do it. Tonight's the night, right? Gail, good to see you. Good morning in Australia. So, and then, you know, there's things like this. There's little intermittent things. We're look For those of you who are just joining us, we're looking at this fantastic book called Hooking on the Hill. Um, and it, it is about the, uh, what was it, the Crescent Hill Guild that's also known as the Heavenly Hookers and the Hook Nook, the building that they hook in. Beautiful rug hooking picture book. So we are really just taking 
uh, a trip through these color images of the most beautiful rugs. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. It's Halloween this weekend, and we are ready for some serious action out there on the streets. Eric used to run Caraway Rug Camp. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, he seems like a major player. I feel like I should know I should know him a lot better than I do. Interesting. Yeah, it was it was a great introduction and I see a lot of his rugs in this book, which was really interesting and also um, him being in the teaching role in some of these. You almost ready? Okay. Ready. Let's do this one and then you can read a Halloween poem. Just check out this page. There are these kinds of little pages in here that just make me really really happy pocket full of posies and then this is going to be one of these designs that's up for the hooking right it's like a little jean pocket little denim pocket with the posies coming out and it says pattern designer Joyce Connell so this is the woman this really pretty lady is the woman who's doing all of these designs that are in the book uh, pattern designer Joyce Connell demonstrates rug hooking to Emma Murray the granddaughter of Nancy Thompson and this is the piece that they were working on denim relaxed fit isn't that great? Yes, you may. So, Jocelyn, I'm going to turn the camera over to Jocelyn for a minute. I even remembered it. Okay. Well, you don't have to remember it. Did you, you're saying you memorized it? Yeah. Are you serious? Did you memorize it in that time? Yeah. What have I got here? Who is this person? Okay, you go ahead and I'll cue you if you need help. Jocelyn's okay. reading a poem called Little Jack Pumpkin Face, and it's actually a country song, uh, anonymous author. So, say it nice and slow for us. Go for it. Little Jack Pumpkin Face lived on a vine. Little Jack Pumpkin Face thought he was fine. First he was small and green, then he was big and yellow. Little Jack Pumpkin Face is a fine fellow. Fantastic. She just read, she just recited that. I forgot that she raps poems. Uh, she just did it. And you just literally learned this and then you wrapped the poem from memory five minutes later. Who are you? Who are you? Where did you come from? It's a short poem. Well, yeah, I mean, I couldn't remember Little that. Little Jack Pumpkin Face lived on a vine. Little Jack Pumpkin Face thought he was fine. He, first he was small and green, then he was big and yellow. Little Jack Pumpkin Face is a fine fellow. Fantastic. Good one. You will get some good feedback as soon as the delay ends. Joss, you are a marvel. Go memorize another one. I'm, no. Okay. So then we get into, you know, one of the things I love about, be careful, my drink is full. One of the things I, great Wait, rapping poem, it is Catherine, it's got rhythm, huh? I have an idea. What's your idea? You know how sometimes there are like people outside? Yeah. What if I wear this in the closet? Okay, can you plug it in? <laughs> We're going to lose it. Gonna lose it. And then go, go away. I love you so much, but just, just go away. Okay? Goodbye. Gouge my eyes out. Okay, so it is time to look at some of these glorious rugs. Sorry. Um, so here we go. We begin our tour of this beautiful log cabin, this lovely transplant from 1997, Tanya's Primitive. We get to see one of the things I love about this book is the way that it's staged. They have the most beautiful vignettes going in different different places, different people's homes, and you get to see the kinds of things they collect too. Like for example, Tanya's Primitive is this lovely rug here that's at the bottom of kind of like a hutch. And I'm looking at that and going, oh, she's got some flow blue kind of uh, a Delft type plates. Looks like a little Staffordshire. What are these things called? Does anybody know? I Oh, I keep picking these up lately. These little you know, they come in different colors, but you know what these are called? I, I have been considering collecting these lately. They look like little puckered tulips on top, but they are so pretty. Anyway, this is Tanya's Primitive, hooked by Margot Morrison. And it says, designed by Marie Azaro and ordered from the Yankee Peddler. So beautiful little rug. And this one here, now this is so pretty. Grandmother's rug, hooked by Shirley Dillard, designed by Jane McGowan Flynn, and the teacher was Sharon Brown. Now, have a look at this one. You know, one of the things that really strikes me about this book is that the, the sort of taste in the rugs that they're doing, they're choosing rugs that I would personally not choose because they seem like they would be very old-fashioned, yet when you see them hooked, 
They are not old fashioned at all. They are super heirloom, beautiful, anytime contemporary masterpieces. And I love to be wrong about this stuff. And I am very wrong because, you know, if I saw the pattern for this, I would say not enough substance. But the way that it hooks, they've hooked it, um, uh, Shirley Dillard has hooked it to look almost like bamboo in the background, which proves the point that I always say it, but I don't always do it. It's like, do as I say, not as I do. Any kind of traditional pattern that you have, right, no matter how simple or sort of done it seems to be, you can always put that magical, unique twist on it that is only your own. And that, that's one of the things about these books, this book, because it's very traditional patterns, um, but they are done in such an extraordinary way. Bed Rug, uh, R-U-G-G-E, hooked by Nancy Thompson, adapted from a drawing. Now, I just love it when Nancy does this. Adapted from a drawing in a book called Needlework in America by Virginia Churchill Bath, circa 1973. And the teacher is Eric Sandberg, right? We were just talking about him. So take a look at Bed Rug. Now, she probably pulled this from, well, she's telling you exactly what book she pulled it from. Now, don't you always see the, thanks, Gail. Don't you always see these 1970s, mostly black and white craft books that r rarely are rug hooking, but often are embroidery. I see them everywhere. And, you know, they're so sort of, now unappealing because of the lack of color. Um, you can tell they're just dated, but these are the very books that you can pull designs like this from. And Nancy has done this several times in the book. She has pulled from another source to come up with an original pattern that is just over the top. I mean, does it get any better than this? I don't believe that it, do I don't believe that it does. I mean, to me, that is like the epitome. That is the pinnacle. That is the toppermost, poppermost. And then this beautiful rug called Dowry, hooked by Frida Baird, designed by Jane Olson Rug Studio. Let me show you that one. These, I mean, there's just so many. And I'm going to show them because, again, this book is so rare. I feel you ought to know what's in it because it's very hard. I bet there are people right now who are madly searching the Internet for it. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Unless you have unlimited wealth, do not buy any book that costs like $700 on a book or, or Etsy or eBay or Amazon or anything um, because that price is generated by a machine based on scarcity. And scarcity is a, is a moment in time, isn't it? It's a time. It's not a state of being. So sooner or later, this book will make rounds again and its value will go down. There's no point in buying even if you even if you can it's not smart to do that is it it's better to just wait and put put out like the probes in the different groups and say i'm looking for this book um and sooner or later it will pay off right and this next one here I'll bring you in focus first come on you stinker there we go isn't that pretty? I love a good basket design. So it looks like it says American Historic, hooked by Joan Payton, designed by Quail Hill Designs. I'm reading off the screen. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, don't you love a good basket pattern with a dark background? Here's another one. Basket of Flowers, hooked and designed by Randy Hamill. Now, can't you see these ladies outside of their, you know, super, super, super woman, Wonder Woman costumes sitting around this log cabin waiting for potluck dinner at six and hooking and laughing and pulling out patterns like this and egging each other on and working together, not like a coven of witches like you sometimes get when you're together in a group. This group seems so gregarious and uh, loving and just sincere, right? So nice. This is another pattern that blows me away. I've seen this pattern and I've never um, really appreciated how how good it is. Uh, Africa's Gift, hooked by Eric Sandberg, uh, designed by Jane McGowan, teacher Ramona Maddox. Now, if you've seen this one, I know I've seen this on eBay so many times and I always think, eh, 
that's a weird kind of uh, fusion of sort of Asian uh, lattice design um, and a floral. But my word, I had not seen this yet. Let me bring it in. How crazy is that? The origami first housewives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love this one too. Wing back chair hooked into a rug by uh, Suzanne Hudgens, designed by Quail Hill Designs, and right next to it, Flora and Fauna, designed and hooked by Joan Payton. Put these two at the bottom. So they, she seems to be sort of sectioning off the designs that have a dark background in these. And, you know, I particularly like the quail hail because I love that rugged sort of antique background, right? Can't even call that a marble cake, like a Hutchinson marble cake. You just can't. It's too splotchy. And I do love it. And a design that is as kind of spare as this one, just very simple pot, very few flowers, a bird that really stands out, not, any, not too much to be confused by there. Um, you can really afford to go nutty in the background and do a full blast antique black background that's very splotchy. And it will just make it look old and cool, right? Old and special. Just if you want to read another poem, get going. Two Baskets of Flowers, hooked by Randy Hamill, adapted from Blackbird Design's quilt book. Now, we talk about this all the time, don't we? If you are a quilter, uh, I was going to say a recovering quilter, but... No, quilting is great. It's just me who can't bear to use a sewing machine anymore. Quilting is a tremendously fun hobby, as we all know. But quilt books are great inspiration. That is a whole book that I'm thinking of, I was going to say, waiting to be written. I want to be the one who writes it. Just quilting with uh, traditional designs, right? Uh, hooking with qu traditional quilt designs. And they're really um, whimsical names, right? That Sometimes it's just the name that gets you. But... Um, yeah, great inspiration looking at quilts and pulling from quilts. So Randy Hamill, um, let's look at these first. You know, we often look at, because we so often talk in this group about composition, about folding a paper in half and doing the mirror image and what a strong design that is. What a strong composition. Come on, you little stinker, huh? Sometimes I think this camera's getting tired, but that's not possible, right? It's a machine. Isn't that sweet? It works so well as a runner or anything, right? This would work really well on the floor, too. I'm not a fan of things that have a direction on the floor because then you can approach it the wrong way. But in this case, because it's in the opposite direction that you would expect to find it, I would go right along with this happily. I think that is a really great design. And this is the uh, second one by Randy Hamill. That looks like such a great sort of tapestry piece, doesn't it? Looks like it's taken from an embroidery. Extraordinary, isn't it? Or very original. Original, okay. There we go. Original first housewives. That's right. That's so true. Now, tall stool and pillow, again, hooked by Eric Sandberg. Um, bottom stool uh, hooked by Faith Jenkins, all designed by Jane McGowan. These are extraordinary. Yeah. So let's look at these little footstools first, and then I'm going to show you one of the other ones I think is interesting. So, you know, I have to say, I have not given enough love and appreciation to Jane McGowan over all these episodes of Coffee Time. She is the granddaughter of Pearl McGowan, you know, rug hooking royalty, of course. But now that I have seen some of these designs done this way by the, by the heavenly hook nook, I have to say, I, it's like completely reawakened uh, an interest for me in what these designs look like because sometimes you see them hooked but I mean this this is like you know like Nancy says at the beginning of the book is it possible it's like there's magic happening in these walls I have to say it this seems it seems there is magic because I have seen some of these patterns hooked before and they just don't look like this this is just over the top for example this one is called half circle magnolia it's hooked by judy cobb and it's designed by braid aid do you remember braid aid they would coach you through the braided rugs and give you that thing that looks like a bias tape maker to do your braided rugs very 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 simple basic lines and i would say slash not super interesting and yet beautiful rug i mean isn't that beautiful do you ever see as an attribution 
you know, designed by Braid Aid. That's the first time I've seen that. And, you know, I have all their catalogs and I flip through them and I think a, a bit of like a snoozer snorer. But then I see something like that and I think it's it's me who's wrong because there is such good meat to those bones, right? It's a good it's a good skeleton to start with. Beautiful line drawing. Three Rows Antique, hooked by Joyce Carey, designed by Jane McGowan Flynn. Another one of these. Isn't that extraordinary? Very limited palette. I am, I think my two, two of my, well, blue and yellow, I think are my least favorite colors. Red um, immediately follows. I'm not a big primary person. I would never think that I would be as much in love with a rug that was so rooted in primary colors, particularly red and yellow, as this one is. Right, and this is extraordinary. Three rows antique. Isn't that fantastic? So, oh God, wait till you see this one. Wait till you see this one. It's going to slay you. So, this one's called Sugar's Sweet Peas, and that's S U G A H, Sugar. Uh, Sugar Sweet Peas, hooked and designed by Bobby Monk, B O B B I E Monk, at the Pris Butler Workshop. Hey, devil dog, what are you doing? You come to trip on the cord? Watch the cord. You got something for us? Just the hiccups, huh? She just coming to join in the fun. So this one is extraordinary. I'm going to show. Yeah, someone called. Do we want like extended warranty? No, we will not take an extended warranty. Put Teddy on the phone and have him tell him about video games for okay. a while. Little Jack Pumpkin Face. Hey Teddy, someone wants to talk about video games. Lived on a vine. Little Jack Pumpkin Face thought it was fine. First he was small and green, then he was big and yellow. Little Jack Pumpkin Face is a, is a, is a fine, fine fellow. fellow. Fantastic Jess. Yeah, you have to hick. So stop, stop, stop with the mask on the table. Thank you. So this is called Sugar Sweet Peas. Okay. I love you too. So this is extraordinary because if you see, first of all, I want to set this up after another rousing rendition of that poem. I want to set this up because this is a beautiful composition with, right, silhouettes. Very Jane Austen in feel. And that's, I think, partly because of the silhouettes, right? When you see silhouettes, you start thinking about early 19th century Jane Austen stuff. Now, look at the mug. It's almost like a shaving mug um, with a laurel wreath and a silhouette, a full body silhouette. But then look at the flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six flowers around. And they're all silhouettes. And, you know, I'm guessing these are people in the family because look at the silhouettes on the table underneath. I think this is one of my favorite rugs in this book. Busy background, too. Unexpected, because I'm loving this rug. It's blues and yellows. It's absolutely stellar. What a great idea, putting together a composition like this, using a very unusual vessel, right, as your sort of ba basket pattern, um, basket or vase. You're using a very unique vessel. And using a silhouette vessel, it's going to really mirror and mimic what she's about to do with all of these flowers exploding with the silhouette within them. How clever is that piece? And if they're members of the family, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? It doesn't get any better than that. Kirsten says, what seems common is the color uh, designer. Maybe the same person influenced the whole group. You know, Kirsten, that is a great point. The reds, dark oranges with the dark seem to have the same eye, even though each one is unique. You know, I think you're right. That is a really um, intuitive take on this because it is, it's a lot of the same colors. And I love this color palette. That's probably why I didn't pick up on that. Um, interesting, interesting. But you know how when you're um, in a group where you have such good camaraderie and you're so close, I, 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 really, I really don't like in person. That's what we're here for, right? That's, I feel that with you. But as far as being in a group, in person and being able to say, what do you think of my maroon and, and orange together? I can't really say that I've had a lot of that in my life. But I imagine that when you do, you hit this amazing kind of apex where you are totally in harmony and in sync with each other. And you have created your own school of rug hooking, right? I mean, I would think in this kind of hornet's nest situation where there's this many talented people in one log cabin, that 
sooner or later you would be kind of looking at each other's work and doing something quite similar at least color wise because you're gr you're growing in a group identity which is such a rare thing i would love to be part of that i don't need to be a lone wolf i would love to be part of a group like this that's doing this kind of fantastic work and this color work is over the top great but i agree with you i see what you are saying and i i agree <clears throat> Oh, cocktail night is so good, isn't it? Oh, those colors were on sale. Or oh, those colors were on sale, Catherine. You're right. You're right. They're very traditional, aren't they? They're very traditional colors. So let's see. This is another one that I just love. Peony and Roses hooked by Shirley Dillard, designed by Primitive Spirit, teacher Jean Benjamin. We've talked about her many times. She's got a great Etsy store. I, I buy things from her quite a bit. Uh, New Earth Designs. Filmed at the home of Faye Butts Jones. So a family member. Beautiful vignette here. First check out the hutch and the vignette. And then dump, dump, dump. Peony and roses. Remember uh, yesterday we were talking about triptychs, right, on coffee time? Now, those triptychs were broke. That was the landscape episode, uh, part two. That was broken up. Uh, into three distinct rugs. Now this is just a triptych that almost like mimics a glass window, right? Like a stained glass window. But it still gives you the same idea. They, the three distinct patterns get a lot more attention, I think, when you break them into a triptych. That is a gorgeous rug. Oh boy, here we go. Flower basket hooked by Sharon Sellers Ferguson, designed by Barbara Brown. And right below it, I'll show you two for one special. Basket of flowers hooked by Georgia Kimball, I love that name, like the department store, right? Uh, designed by Barbara Brown. So both of these by Barbara Brown. You know, the top one is much more 1930s deco colors, right? And the lower one is much more um, the darker traditional colors. But look at how different basket designs can be, right? Very different baskets. Let's take a peek at this one, too. That's another real traditional one. What does that say? Sarah, hooked by Eric Sandberg, designed by Jane McGowan. So they have a real thing going. I mean, they have got a lot of patterns by, for example, Jane McGowan there. What a, what a hornet's nest. I can't stop saying it. I'm just dying to go there. I'm dying to see these rugs in person. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so many. I mean, we haven't even started the book. Floral, hooked by Sharon Ferguson. This is also so beautiful. And let me show you the way it's set up here, right? It's set, this is where it, it be in the world. And that's, it doesn't say whose house that is that time. But this is adapted. Another one of these that Nancy Thompson did, adapted from something else. Remember the first one she did, the bed rug? This one she did from a swatch, from a fabric swatch. And don't you occasionally find, at least on the internet, stumble upon images of fabric swatches. And it is just such a moment of greatness, mm. such a small vignette of greatness. Well, think about doing what Nancy did and turning that tiny swatch of greatness into a hooked rug design. Because when you look at a swatch, sometimes you think, I love it, but what would I do with it? It's not right for the wallpaper. It's not right for the curtains. Well, if you love the motif and you want to pick or pluck just a few images from it, do something like this. Right? It's so interesting. It's so evocative because first my eye wants to say fruits, bird's nest, what is it? It's kind of a mix of things, isn't it? It's almost like an illustration, like some kind of a scientific illustration in some kind of book. It's so pretty and different. And look at the way she's handled the background in that kind of robin's egg blue. Very, it's like splotchy and unexpected, isn't it? So let's see, let me show you some other ones that are quite different. Oh boy, this is just getting, it's getting me. Um, Small Persian, hooked by June Willingham, designed by Susan Feller of Ruckman Mill Farm. This is in somebody's bathroom, imagine. What a beautiful rug to have down in the bathroom. And I like how this rug is broken up, too. I have never heard of this company. I'm going to have to Google them later. Wow, really? Really? Sorry, I can't quite get that in focus. I like these these peeps into people's homes too. See that one down here? 
That little one is called Small Persian. Okay, that's Small Persian. They're both Small Persian. It's the same rug, hooked two different ways. Light Dawns on Marble Skull. Those are both the same rug on this page. The one that's in the bathroom and the one that's in the living room are both the same design, hooked different ways. So pretty. Now this one over here is called Flower Garden, hooked by Randy Hamill, designed by Jean Benjamin. Again, New Earth Designs. Fantastic. And it says, Mary, Mary, extraordinary. How does your hooked rug grow? With loops which turn from woolen strips to flowers in a row. How sweet is that? There's all these kinds of little moments of poetry and quotes in this book that are so sweet. Flower Garden. Isn't that great? See the little bee on top? What about this one? I love this one. Make sure the light is right. I love this one. Isn't that different? The basket full of stars. So this one is Star Flowers, hooked by Carolyn Folsom, designed by Blackbird Designs in the booklet, Samplers from the Past, Part 1. Oh, that is so good. The background of that one, too, Star Basket. Isn't that great? It's like spilled wine, isn't it? Look at the outlining in that, too. Isn't that smart? Little, little sort of doves of peace motif, but with the bluebirds. That is so good, isn't it? I'm going to have to speed up. I'm not going to show you every single thing, but I want to show you lots because it's so good. Um, oh, these are so good, but I can't do everything, can I? Yes, I can. Welcome, hooked by Elaine Zimney, designed by Primitive Woolens. Let's take a look at this one. Hello, Helene. Happy Friday night. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, you know, when you think about a cornucopia design, you tend to think about fall. This doesn't really scream fall to me. It just has that cornucopia motif, which is one that we often want to use. You can see there's a lot of kind of what look like quillies, but they're not. They're hooked in. Spiral type flowers. All kinds of imaginary flowers coming out of this cornucopia. A little bird kind of sitting down on 2005. Isn't that so sweet and look at a little bit of bling in the background right a little carryover from the blue and mustard color flowers up in the sky so sweet isn't that different bittersweet hooked by carolyn Folsom, designed by reo designs or rio reo i've never heard of this one either happy friday to you too helene happy cocktail night i'm going to show you this one this one is so different Mm. these traditional designs I'll tell you it is almost like that saying simple is hard right doing to me designing something like this would be so hard because it would seem like it's not enough and yet look at how great it is isn't that beautiful and look at this one here underneath it look at that directional hooking isn't that fantastic Basket of Flowers, hooked by Joyce Connell, designed by Susan Feller of Ruckman Hill Farms. Isn't that fantastic? Even the whipping around the edges. Look at this on the back of the couch, designed by, just take it off the hook if they want to give us a warranty. Designed by Susan Feller of Ruckman Hill Farms, folk, the folk art rug, hooked by Joyce Connell, designed by Heart in Hand Rug Hooking. What a nice sate too, huh? <laughs> so again, this is a picture book and it really is filled with pictures. She is documenting the work of this group of women and it is extraordinary and it is vast. Um, another bed rug designed by Yankee Peddler. I don't think this is the same one. I think it's, it's the same rug twice. The bottom one is hooked by Paula Bartlett. The top one is hooked by Faith Jenkins and again, these two rugs on this page here are the same but completely different colors. Isn't that great? Look at this one just caught my eye too. What a scatter pattern. A little bit of hit or miss in the border. What a scatter palette pattern. Calico hooked by Paula Bartlett designed by Jean Benjamin of New Earth Designs. Now that's another one I would say to myself I'm not sure I'm not sure there's enough there to lock into, and yet 
She has locked, Paula has successfully locked and gotten a beautiful rug out of it. Flowers and Stars, hooked by Nancy Thompson, designed by Spruce Ridge. We have heard of them designs. I'm looking at the one at the bottom here. This one here. Isn't that a huge basket design? You know, and in this one, we've got stars, we've got flowers, but the main player, right, the main character of this piece really is the basket. When you do that much work on a basket, that is extraordinary. That really is amazing, isn't it? Another beautiful one, Bradley Primitive, hooked by Nancy Tom Thompson, designed by Harry Fraser. Right? We rarely, we talk about the Fraser Company, we talk about their cutters, we're aware of their patterns, but do you often see them hooked? You don't often see them hooked. This one is extraordinary. Talk about a big border. Because that center part looks like it could be a complete mat in and of itself, right? But then you pan out and you've got this enormous border of these very light colored flowers with this sort of fern feel to them. And aren't they amazing? Yeah, that's the thing about this book. You know, how often do you get a book that really truly is a picture book? You know, and, and everything has merit, right? Looking at anything is good for inspiration. It's good for knowledge. It's good to hone your expertise. But how often do you get a book that just simply says, I am a picture book. This is an all inspiration book. And looking at it, you think, would I have hooked that that way? Would I have hooked it a different way? I've never thought to use those colors. Look at what you can do with a background. Look at what you can do with a basket. I mean, that's what a book like this is so good for. That's probably why this book is so desirable. This next section, this is the very thing she's doing. Bowl of Flowers, designed by Ramona Orahill. And the whole group is hooking it. So, for example, these are seven examples of the same pattern all very different but wait there's more there's eight more examples of the same pattern and you could really talk about a swatch card right you could really go from one to the next thinking I want my next project to be in this kind of a palette and just look at these two pages of 8 plus 7 15 right 15 actually make that 16 examples of the same rug hooked and it's so useful as an exercise to see those colors side by side because you're really saying to yourself, it's one thing to, to think about colors and look at the color wheel, right? It's very dry approaching that way. But when you see a rug and you already love the colors, you can say to yourself, I wonder why I like same pattern, this rug more than that rug. And looking at a book like this where it shows you so many examples of one pattern, you can really get clarity, right? You can really define why you like one color example more than another and that can be helpful moving forward right to your next project or the project after that that can really be helpful moving forward you sometimes you just some people are the kind of people right and i say this all the time particularly to the kids some people are the kind of people who you can tell them something and then they go running with it right it's like a football they take it they go running with it charlie brown style other people need to see they need to see or they need to do it themselves to really know. And that's when life gets difficult, is it? If you're one of those kinds of people that whatever you do, including making mistakes, you have to do it yourself. You can't learn from other people. You can't get advice from other people. There's so many different kinds of people in this world. But for the people who are, are content to see and to do something like that, then having all these great examples is a good thing. For people who have to try themselves and hook and pull out and hook and pull out, it's a welcome to the club, isn't it? Because I do that too. It's hard. Two doves in the dahlias, hooked by Damone, who dyed all the wool and designed by Jane McGowan Flynn. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Hello, Tara. I love all those pumpkins. I've got to carve some pumpkins. I haven't had time to do that yet. I, I'd like to at least carve one. See if I can scrap. All of these are so beautiful. I'm not flipping because, oh my God, wait till you see this one. Hooked by Nancy Thomas, the Shepherdess's Bouquet, adapted from an antique embroidery. And again, looking at these older books, you know that you see these pictures of samplers, embroideries, fractors, all this sort of early forms of embroidery and textile art. 
Sometimes they are fairly boring in all their black and white glory, but when you look at them closely and then you come up with this kind of design, are you kidding me? Let me stand up. I want to be sure you can see this well squared. I mean, what I love about this is the scale. Talk about a big basket, right? Not a metaphor. Talk about a big basket. You've got the shepherdess there. You've got the house. Looks like there's a little fountain. I mean, this is just an extraordinary composition. Isn't that amazing? I love how the border really mimics the vessel. Isn't that extraordinary? You know, and the flowers is a story, right? That looks like a proper fine art painting. But then you get to the bottom and you see the little sheep and you see the character under the shade of the tree and you see the home. There's even more, right? I mean, there's even more to see. That's extraordinary. So that is a Nancy Thomas, Thompson, I'm sorry, Thompson original. The Shepherdess's Bouquet. Unbelievable. And then she moves on to this chapter called Fruit Salad, hooked by Nancy Thompson, designed by Joyce Connell. This is another one of the free patterns at the beginning. Chop up your grapes and apples too. Add pecans before you're through. Smack your lips and rub your tummy. This fruit salad's mighty yummy. And then she gives you this great design. This is this is the design hooked. And this is the drawing of fruit salad. That would be one of the free designs that comes with the book. Up for the hooking. Isn't that so sweet? The little watermelons and the pineapple growing on the same tree. What a great design. There's the drawing. Isn't that fun? So this whole chapter is called Fruit Salad. This is how she breaks things down. She's so clever. You know, this is an enormous book at... Um, about 100 and 166 pages of photos and as you can see there's multiple photos on each page there's so much work in this book it's outrageous and I like how she's broken it into chapters so we can really see you know, genres right like this is a chapter about fruit here's a huge pineapple here's some glorious seat covers with peaches and um, pears and maybe tangerines right? A pineapple composition, antique pineapple, hooked by Becky Vickery, designed by Quail Hill. So she breaks things up into a very logical way. Um, I've never seen this pattern. It's a Bev Conway pattern. I've, I've met her, and she's fantastic. I had her design book, but I never at least noticed this pattern with the two cats. I thought at first that it was uh, Happy DeFranza, but it's Bev Conway in, in a kind of like bookends with a pineapple in the middle. What a great design that is. Just amazing, right? It's just, it's an endless inspiration book. So this whole chapter is on fruit pie. Can she bake a cherry pie? And then there's a few patterns with cherries, pomegranates. I just love how they add all this cute extra stuff. What a bedtime book, I'll tell you. There's no way on earth, uh, unless you go to bed at 3 in the afternoon, there's no way on earth you're going to get through this with all of these pictures of antiques and all this interest, you know, uh, the quotes and little sayings, little jokes. I mean, it's just endless. This one is beautiful. It's called Birds of Paradise. Paradise. And it's got pears. This is another Bev Conway. I've seen this pattern, and I've never seen it hooked. And now that I've seen it hooked, I'm thinking... gives me that partridge in a pear tree feel too, right? It's so unusual. What a great traditional with those big fat pears hanging there. Isn't that fantastic? Interesting. And now this chapter is called Points of View. Room with a View designed by Joyce Connell. From the mountains to the prairies, what a lovely sight to see. It's America the Beautiful, a home for you and me. And then she's got this designed design that Joyce drew. And then as always, an example of it hooked. Lots of sheep added, right? So this is like kind of um, a more basic line drawing. But here it's really been expanded upon. Lots of sheep in the distance. And of course you can customize anything, right? Why not? So this whole chapter is um, fits in really well with our landscape uh, segment that we did this week. Lots of different places, Lake Mott, Nantucket Island. 
Now this one I do need to show you. This is Squire Thompson and the Misses, hooked by Nancy Thompson and adapted. Here, here's one of her like hit it out of the park ones. Adapted from an old stitchery at the 2005 Pris Butler Workshop, sponsored by the Crescent Lane Rug Hooking Guild. This adaptation is courtesy of Stephen and Carol Huber. Wait till you, wait till you see this. I think this is my favorite one in the book. Are you kidding me? Squire Thompson and his missus and the missus. I mean, that really looks like a Gainsborough painting, doesn't it? Look at that directional hooking in the sky. It really looks like stitches. You can see that being a long stitch embroidery for sure. Look at the colors. It has that folk art feel of that out of sort of perspective house on the hill that's gated out, right? Like a little hill, a little dark hill. Isn't that extraordinary? I mean, that just takes my breath away. So this whole chapter is um, filled with, oh, this one is so cute too, the Vintage Collection, hooked and designed by Gail Bishop at the Pris Butler Workshop, shown below in Roy Moseman's uh, replica of an old-time country store. It features Gail at work in her Madison, Georgia antique booth. How cute is this? So this is the rug. It's Gail at work at her antique booth, and this is where it's actually placed. I mean, wouldn't it stop your heart if you saw this vignette? It's so good, isn't it? And then to her next chapter is called Birds of a Feather. Flocks of geese are on the wing. Songbirds herald in the spring. Feathered nests are being made and speckled eggs are being laid. So sweet. So this is one of these Joyce Connell designs that are at the beginning that you would be very welcome to hook. How sweet is that? It's like little laundry lines with the birdhouses on top. So this whole chapter is about birds. And this is, I'll show you like an overview. See if your eye catches any of these. The bottom one is another great vignette. Beautiful. The, the amount of rugs that they have to work with in this book um, makes it possible to categorize rugs by these different chapter categories, right? Because, I mean, if you were just dealing with a normal amount of rugs, you you would be very limited in how many chapters you could break them up into, but this is extraordinary. She's got a uh, quote from Genesis there. She's got some beautiful quotes in this book. This bird and breakfast offers birds a shelter from the rains Inside, they find a tranquil spot to rest their wee bird brains. How cute. She's got this cute little composition down here of a bird on a little teapot. A little bird fluttering up to the hole. How sweet is that? And then our next chapter is called Foul Play. So moving uh, from sort of garden birds, birdhouse birds, to like uh, working birds, to egg-laying birds. Foul Play, cock a doodle do Roosters Crow and Chickens Coo. Therefore, as they cluck and lay, this next group is called Foul Play. And Joyce Connell design called Daisy Chicks. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? See the patterning on like the mama and then the baby chicks? Daisy, Daisy pattern, hence Daisy Chicks, right? So sweet. Oh, how often would I have gathered you together as a mother fowl gathers her brood under her wings. Matthew 23, 37. So sweet. I mean, she's got some gorgeous rugs here. This one is like a crazy quilt design, right? With the rooster in the middle. So many rugs to pull from. So, you know, at the beginning, those more traditional designs, I would say absolutely that they're borrowing from the same sort of color family. They have... They have created kind of a universal or group aesthetic. But moving toward the end, these are so different. So different. I mean, it's so much, it's so much work. You know, I wonder how many years this book represents because it's just crazy. And in different places, they feature different people. Um, this is Pat Cardin modeling Nancy Thompson's wool felted rooster on ready-made sweater 
uh, like they did a little applique thing, Wolf Felting Teacher, Carrie Martin. So they're just doing stuff like this. Seems like all the time. Project Felting, a, doing a little like applique rooster on a sweater. I mean, it just sounds like they're, they're just having the most fun. Hook, line, and sinker, designed by Joyce Connell. Grab some bait, a fishing pole, head down to the fishing hole. Catch a fish with worm or minnow, gonna have a catfish dinner. And isn't it great, you know, when you get this many patterns and it says to you at the beginning of the book, they are free for the hook in, go ahead and do it. But it's so nice. So in this chapter, and the fish of the sea will declare this truth to you, Job 12, 8. All of this nautical theme stuff, very sort of Nantucket, Ralph Cahoon style. Very traditional again, but all of the rugs in this chapter have the theme of the sea. And there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, gosh. You know, I mean, I can't possibly go through and tell you and, and attribute everything. You, you have to look for the book. You have to look for the book. Feed Me, Pet Me, Love Me. Designed by Joyce Connell. Look at this. So this chapter is going to be about, I think, domestic pets, right? Companions. What a great color scheme going here has such a folky, quirky look, doesn't it? So neat. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. And then we get into the sort of Noah's Ark, Peaceable Kingdom stuff, right? I mean, the lamb sort of resting with the lion. Look at this glorious rainbow, Noah's Ark. That rainbow is glowing. Another view of Noah's Ark. It's so much, isn't it? It's, oh, God, talk about a rainbow. And they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of the spirit of life, Genesis. How nice is that? Lots of Noah's ark stuff, but another rainbow that is just glowing, impossibly. I think that's the same pattern. But gosh, what fun to work together in this way. This is a lion like we've seen, Primitive Lion, many times. But this one is designed by, hooked by Mary Evans, designed by Lib Calloway. Lion and Beaver. Interesting. Wow, yeah, all these little uh, sort of domestic type animals. Fantastic. Whole page, Kirsten of Cats. At least, at least these pages. And, and you know, one of the other things that's great about this book is you're seeing so many different designers. Um, and these are designers that I don't, I don't see every day. I know these are very well-known people, but I, I just somehow have skipped over their work. I'm ashamed to say. Oh my God, I didn't know the dog dressed as a spider was still sitting next to me here. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Crazy. Checkered cow, right? Kind of Brahmin musicians here. Cats and chairs. There you go. Off on a bender, right? Cats and chairs. And then it moves to horses in a chapter called Give a Dog a Bone. It's just endless. It's endless. There's a chapter on sheep. You are what you eat. You, E-W-E. -E. Look at this one on the top. I love this. I haven't even finished looking at this book myself yet, but look at the color of sheep in this one. Isn't that sweet? Nice little pillow on the chair. Think of the time it must have taken. Great Friday night is, oh, thank you, Gaynor, thank you. Um, think of the amount of time it must have taken to set up all of these gorgeous vignettes to sort of show these rugs at their best. This one's beautiful. I showed this one, uh, Cruel You, hooked by Paula Bartlett from a design from an old issue of Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Cruel you, C R E W E L. I mean, you gotta love that, right? What an interesting piece. Reminds me a little bit of Jim Shore, right? You know, the sort of sculpture artist now who works in, I think, resin, but really beautiful patterning. And now this is gonna be the next chapter Kidding Around. Oh, thanks, Kirsten. Thumbs up are great. Kidding Around, and then this is the free pattern that comes with this chapter the dog playing. Um, Jump rope. How cute is that? 
So this whole chapter is going to be kids, children. Oh, actual kids like goats. Oh, and children. This is where I pulled the thumbnail for this week. Nut babies, flower children, veggie babies, and fruit babies. You've got to see these. I thought this was good for the Halloween episode too. So here we've got nut babies. And flower babies. And... These are the veggie babies. These kind of look like cupies, right? Am I thinking the right thing? Those cupie dolls and fruit babies. This is the one I used for the thumbnail. How great is that? I'm wondering if cupie is the right word, if I'm kind of transposing that. Um, interesting but yeah it's certainly those dolls are familiar in terms of the way that they look so this whole chapter is there's like little dutch kids there's like all kinds of things of of children oh boy let me just show you this page quickly it's so different and you know even though she's bracketing things off with kind of a theme sunbonnet so that's the best sunbonnet sue i've ever seen even though she's bracketing things off with a kind of a theme for each chapter you got to say, I've never seen stuff like this. So many of these I'm thinking, I've just never seen anything like this. So even though you open the chapter and you expect to see rugs that feature children, they're so different. You've just, it, it just blows your mind, right? Two Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. That's a book we used to love by Bobby Monk, designed by Pris Butler. Look at this one. It's not something. There is a Cupid doll. Nice Van Gogh sky outside. So cute, Cupid doll. Woman who ran with the wolf. <laughs> Woman who ran with the wolf, Red Riding Hood, right? And then there's like a whole vignette set up just of Red Riding Hood themed hooking. Including that three-dimensional doll. Right, they set up this beautiful little vignette. You see the wolf in the bed with the patchwork quilt in the hooked rug, and then the hooked doll of Red Riding Hood, and then they set up this little thoughtful vignette of Red Riding Hood stuff. Little house, little dish, little dolls. How sweet. Can you just see them gathered around working on all these vignettes? So good. Hark, the hooked angels sing. And now another chapter that's just angels. Wow, Fractor Angel. Hooked by Beverly Goodrich, adapted from an antique fractor. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, a fractor, as I'm sure you know, is kind of a pen Dutch uh, document that would include both text and illustrations. Was that your favorite, Catherine? The little monkeys jumping on the bed? That was so whimsical and sweet. I love this one, too. Two angels hooked by Frida Baird. Designed by Red Clover Rugs. Has a, a little bit of a look of a fractor, but again, this repeats, repeats are strong as a design element. One upside down, one right side up, but essentially the same silhouette. Isn't that a great, simple, really thoughtful and fun composition? Bound to be successful. Absolutely love that. Oh gosh, I wish everybody, everybody, I wish everybody who wanted this book could have this book because it's just over the top. This is another one of these that everybody hooked. Ms. Blossom designed by Woolen Memories and she've got the whole guild hooking. I'm sure I'll come in on the design a little bit. Sort of angel at the picket fence with a watering can. And again, you get this great opportunity to look at many color examples of the same pattern done. Miss Blossom, first rug hooked by Christy Hammonds, designed by Woolen Memories. <clears throat> That's more of a close-up of it. What a great design that is. So country and charming and primitive. It's very sweet. Now what does this say? Home is where the heart is. Every heart when day is done yearns for home with setting sun. There's no place we'd rather be than snug at home with family. Sitting at the kitchen table, table elbows off if you are able, 
catching up the day's affairs, sharing love and shedding cares. Oh man. And another nice free pattern by Joyce. Look at all those elements of the houses, right? These are hooked. They're kind of pulled out. So sweet. I have to get this book. I know. See if it's out there. You know, see if it's out there. You never know. When it, when it turned up and I found it, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was this lucky because I was looking for it for a few months. But if you're real diligent um, and you just keep looking, sooner or later you'll find it. I hope it's sooner, but you will find it. This is another one I really love. A Country Garden Hooked by Nancy Thompson. I'm sorry. Yeah, Thompson. Designed by Karen Kale. K-A-H-L-E, Primitive Spirit, Teacher Frieda, Frieda McDonald. You know, what I love about this one is the perspective, right? This crazy, this crazy out of proportion perspective with instead of using a, a basket or a vase, it's a house with all of these big pedula type flowers growing out of it. And look at this uh, lamb's tongue border. Instead of doing many, many sort of rings or rainbows of different colors. They're using the lamb's tongue, but they're doing like basically the same color family, different tones, light to dark, different intensities, but really the one color. And it almost looks like cut paper at that point. It has a real fractor feeling, but then that house at the bottom of it is very unexpected. Very unexpected because, um, you know, I have not seen that in a, in a fractor anyway. They like this house design. This is the Town Garden hooked by Karen Kale, Primitive Spirit. This is another one where they're showing a three, three for one special on this page. Let's see if I can come in more first. Beautiful ombre hooking. And again, little picket fence, small little house, flowers towering over the house. Isn't that gorgeous? <clears throat> You know, these are many traditionals, but they're so offbeat, aren't they? <gasps> oh, my word. Country Cottage, hooked by Nancy Thompson, designed by Rugwell, One Word Studio. Gosh, if I had to pick one from this book, it would be impossible. Isn't that gorgeous? Really limited color scheme, using the dark background again, going to that palette of kind of the reds and the oranges. Really successful. Really, so you see why people just are, are clamoring for this book. On your mark, get set, go. Pretty runners in a row. So runners on your mark, get set, go. Like table runners, right? So cute. So this whole chapter is on runners, right? Which is the snake got into that picture. Um, so interesting. And then pulling from the gizzards. A medley of miscellaneous rugs designed by Joyce Carroll. This is another one of her designs. It's a cute old lady pull, pulling from the gizzards. And it says, Variety's the spice of life. Take Jack Spratt and his plump wife. A bit of this, a tad of that. Opposites, they say, attract. These don't fit a category, but each rug has a unique story. Interesting. And then this is where we've got the potpourri of rugs. Right? They're going to show us many rugs in the last chapter. Wow, that one's really different, isn't it? Teddy? Teddy's busting it out in there. Duncan, hooked by Eric Sandberg. Now, this is the example I looked at a lot, designed by Pearl McGowan, because the guild in um, Massachusetts, right, like around Springfield, just did this Duncan rug during uh, 2020 as a group contest, and I bought the pattern, and... Shame to say I haven't done it yet, um, but they were all hooking that one at the same time. There were so few meetings last year, I didn't have a ton of incentive for getting stuff done on time. But now they've got like they've got log cabins, they've got traditionals, they've got Persians, they've got all manner of things in this last chapter. It's a lot. They've got stair runners like this. Remember that story time we did with the stair runner about the America's first auctioneer, Emma Bailey, I think. Her stair runners, these are beautiful stair runners too. So you can see it's just a complete mixed bag at the end. My fairy fay. Whoa. My fairy fay, Nancy Thompson. Isn't that gorgeous? Talk about whimsical. Adapted from a tapestry pillow purchased at a flea market. 
by her sister, Faye Butts Jones. So we saw a window into her house earlier. Wow. And it says, this space is reserved for future for the future rug that will be hooked by Nancy Thomas for her sister, Jean, Jean Butts Jones. Punch and Judy collection. So owned by flea market addict Faye Butts Jones. So the sister has this great collection of Punch and Judy stuff. And in the middle, you can see there's a hooked Punch and Judy stocking. Isn't that great? There's the Punch and Judy stocking. Oh, okay, Linda says Amazon and A books have it for about 70. Well, you know, that is a heck of a lot for a book, but I have to say that's the lowest I've seen it in a really long time. And when you think about it, okay, I'm, I'm enabling, I'm enabling. When you think about it, if you were to get a coffee table book at a new store, it would cost 70 at least, right? And this is better than any coffee, sorry, this is better than any coffee table book you could ever imagine, isn't it? Because you've got 160 something pages of hundreds and hundreds of rugs, endless inspiration. You'll, your face is going to be in this book like every day, I promise you. Um, Wow. So anyway, huge. I mean, it just goes on and on. I just, how am I ever going to stop? Holiday hodgepodge. And then this is the pattern from there, from that chapter. This is the pattern done up. How cute is that with the turkey, the Santa, the tree, the flag, the rabbit, the stars? I mean, fantastic. Just these free patterns alone have got to be worth $70. Am I right? Um... Oh, more poetry. Oh, it's you know you know the thing about this. I'm putting my finger on it now. The thing about this is it's such a personal book, and you really get the feeling that these ladies are such close and loving friends that you just want to share in that and be a part of that. It feels good to look at this book and to see their inside jokes and the rugs they've made with each other and for each other. Hamburgers, hot dogs, and pink lemonade. Red, white, and blue in a festive parade. Our flag flying proudly. Fireworks in the sky. America celebrates the 4th of July. Oh. All these great vignettes, right? So if you love rugs and antiques, I think probably most of us fit into that category. You're just going to love this book. There's so much to see. So much to see. Oh, here we go. Here's i got to show the Halloween stuff. For, Oh, what? Brownie and Pumpkin. Brownie, like, remember the Brownie books from the 1920s? Hooked by Nancy Thompson and adapted from an 1890 Palmer Cox Brownie book as a gift from her niece, Allison Yeomans. Oh, my gosh. Look at this one. That's what I'm looking at right now. See that Brownie? Now, this, this alone has got to be worth the cost of this book because these rugs that Nancy Thompson is doing that are adapted from... All these different books, all these different sources. These are unbelievable. These are my favorite books in, makes you think of the Wall Street Journal. Absolutely. Absolutely, you're right. It's the same kind of setup. It's just fantastic. We are at the end of the book now. Leaves falling, pumpkins soon, grow beneath the harvest moon. Oh, man. And then she gets into Thanksgiving. What a beautiful, colorful Thanksgiving rug. Tom One, hooked by Nancy Thompson, designed by Emmy Lou Lace. Wow. So, yeah, huge thumbs up. I mean, I can't, yeah. I mean, how, how can you beat it? Look at these crazy vignettes. How can you beat it? Yeah, it's fantastic. This book is amazing. Oh, don't get me started. I won't be able to stop. I'm trying to, st I swear I'm trying to stop. Look at all these of Santa. How great is that? Aren't these amazing? And at the text, I'm not reading you all the text, of course. Uh, there's so much text. Baba Sisterhood. Side by side, the Baba Sisterhood. Oh, so now this last chapter, I guess, is going to be more on their own rug designs, maybe. Gosh, they have fun. It's just infectious. They have so much fun. Oh, it's like a photo album of all the people in the book. All the people, all the kids, all the grandkids. All the players. Oh, so funny. 
pages and pages of the shenanigans. And even though I've only looked at this book, like last night and the night before, I'm absolutely recognizing. Oh, it's many pages of these ladies. They are having fun. This is just, they are so fortunate, aren't they, to have each other. <laughs> Two heads would be better than one in order to host the weekly hook-ins. It's time now to pull up the covers and say good night, but not before adding one last thought. It seems to me that there isn't enough love to go around in this world and that we should each make it our business to love others unsparingly. Therefore, if you have tons of love to share, please come join us on any Monday and spill it out in the Crescent Lane Rug Hooking Guild. In return, we'll feed you and we'll show you our rugs. Oh, yes. And we'll love you back. How nice is that? Oh, uh oh, uh oh. That is so sweet. Look at this. That's the last page. What a nice sentiment. I could not do any better than that. That's Nancy and Al, I think, tucked up. Catherine just said, um, I wonder if the early White House had hooked rugs. I know that the Grant White House had hooked rugs. Um, there was another White House. Who was it? Um, was it the Coolidge? Was it the Coolidge White House? We did an episode of this on Coffee Time. There were at least two presidents who had a number of the the Lincoln White House had rugs, uh, hooked rugs. Um, there were a number of presidents who had hooked rugs in the White House, but one of them I covered on Coffee Time, and I'm super ashamed to say, I'm having trouble remembering. After all that fun. Um, one of them, there was a question about whether his dad had hooked the rugs. Do you remember that episode? Um, and I was pulling that information mostly from Rug Hooking Magazine. I pulled from a couple other places when I went down the rabbit hole on the internet. But I was using as a skeleton Rug Hooking Magazine because they did an, they did an issue that featured presidential rugs. So that is answered in one of the back issues. If you Google Rug Hooking Magazine, President's White House, it'll probably pull up the date of that. You could also pull up the channel ribbon candy hooking because I certainly use presidents in the tagline but there were at least three presidents if not more um, who had rugs in the White House and it was a big deal not made for them but already had them and had them down as decorations so that's a huge yes to that and possibly a to be continued the more we find out right so anyway, what a great night. What a great Halloween. You need to want to go and watch those. Yeah, they were good episodes. I think what launched us into the conversation about um, the White House rugs was uh, Canadian, famous Canadian rug hooker, Elizabeth Lafort, right? Elizabeth Lafort, because she did, I think, Eisenhower. And um, that rug was super famous at the time, made her a proper celebrity and as she deserved to be. Huge scale hook drugs. And that went into Eisenhower's White House. But that kind of brought up the question in the same issue of Rug Cooking Magazine, um, how many other uh, White Houses, you know, because they redecorate with each incoming president, had hook drugs. And it was, it was several. So that's an interesting question. That's, yeah, something else we should look at and pull from again. But what a fun episode tonight. You know I'm going to spend some more time just looking and gazing and drooling. Uh, that book, Linda, is a treasure. It is a treasure. Of all the books that I've looked at, we've looked at together on this show, I have to say, you know, they it was so right for Nancy to call this a picture book because this is a picture book. If you are coming to this hobby as a, as a beginner and you're just putting your toe in the water at this point, you know, a book like this is priceless because you are seeing such a massive cross-section of different designers. And that is so helpful when you go and start shopping for designs that you want to hook. It's good to have a good starting point saying, I, you know, I looked at this book and there's at least 20 rugs that I love by this person. If you're coming to the craft as a person who's been doing this for years and you have a lot of pent up creativity and ideas and you're just looking for ways to open a window and let it out, you know, when you look at Nancy's own rugs where she's pulling from embroideries and fractors and children's books, um, old illustrations and woodcuts and all kinds of things it makes you think let me give my my bookshelf a second glance and look at some of the books that i have there look at some illustrations things that i can pull and borrow from myself right what a great idea because it's it's infinite isn't it it's a gift that keeps on giving if you already have a, a busy bookshelf out there you should go and look at the spines of those books and 
see if there's anything that really moves you into doing a, a Nancy style original composition because for me those are the best ones in this book were the ones that she did that were pulled from other sources I love all of them uh, and what a special book but not just the rugs but the story of the group of women who who spend this much time together and eat together support each other and have this great thing in common so I hope that I hope that everybody who wants this book can get a copy of this book um, I'll keep my fingers crossed for each and every one of you. So anyway, have a great, have a great weekend. Um, I will be back to you on Monday. Happy Halloween if you're celebrating. Um, yeah, I'll be back to you on Monday. The kids are off on Monday and Tuesday for career development for the teachers. So it's a four day weekend here, but happy Halloween and um, enjoy if you are celebrating. And otherwise, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I will come up with something fun for us for our Monday episode. So I will see you back for coffee time. Uh, uh, I must said seven uh, noon Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. And uh, you can reach me in the meantime at ribbon at gmail.com. I will see you soon. Have a great weekend.